All right, guys, there's a lot of total content that I want to farm. But the problem is Aeon of Horus, and I'm sure he makes great content. There's a lot of spoilers. There's a lot of light novel spoilers. There's a lot of future content spoilers. And it's, it's not easy for me to just find videos of like cut content of this episode like we can do for ReZero. So every video that we farm from this guy is pretty much a gamble. But at this point, due to how poor the anime is at explaining all the things necessary for the light novels to fully understand the show, I feel like tanking some minor or subtle spoilers is only going to enhance the experience. So fuck it. I'm going on raw. Let's do it. Why the hell does this green-haired prick want to turn this lolly nun into a vampire? Let's cover the entire Deep Blood arc from Izzard. Index from start to finish, from how it's portrayed in the light novels instead of the anime. Which yeah, because the anime for this arc, bro, it was fast. The first episode was really funny and cute because of, you know, Hime is saying 100 yen, please. The second episode was, what the fuck is happening? And the third episode was still confusing, but... Due to Toma having such a hype moment, I don't really care. So the arc was genuinely fun. It, it was actually fun. It's just that the second episode was like, what is happening? Which made a number of important changes. Let's explain what the hell happened in the Deep Blood arc. We Let's begin go. as Toma now has lost his memories from the previous arc as he tries to adjust to life as a new person. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if we're ever going to get those memories back. He said that it lies deep in his heart, but scientifically, that's just bullshit. But hey, we got magic in this world, right? Maybe we can use Index's memory manipulation magic shit, even if we've lost the magic and memory. I'm not sure, but it's kind of crazy how, like, the show starts and boom, bro lost his memories. Now he has to start fresh and he has to act like other people. Like, he still has to act as if other people don't know that he hasn't lost his memories. With him now taking care of the girl called Index from the Anglican Church, who he recently saved. Soma and Index bump into our guy. I just realized that Index... <laughs> Toma's a milkman. Index is white. <laughs> I don't know why I just assumed everyone's just Japanese in this world, but I I Index, you know? <laughs> He a milkman for sure. Gami Pierce, who Toma doesn't remember, despite this guy being the biggest degen in history. One second. This guy, Aoguma, Ao, Ao something, Aogami, he's like a Lolicon and a Shotokan, right? Is there anything else beyond that? The free visit, not McDonald's, where they bump McDonald's. into a mysterious girl in a shrine maiden Hime. costume named Himigami Isa. Meanwhile, the Anglican magician style Magnus visits the board chairman and leader of Academy City, simply known as Alistair. So he is... Hold up one more time. The magician style Magnus visits the board chairman and leader of Academy City. Damn. Leader. Academy City. Simply known as Alistair. And you know what's crazier? It's not Alistair's design of floating upside down, being the director general of Academy City and everything. It's the fact that Stade, that's right, it's not style. Fuck you, it's Stade. That's how Kanzaki calls him. Stade is involved with this guy, despite being so fucking young. Like, how can you be 14 and you're like smoking cigarettes? You're like church of narcissus whatever for necessarius whatever and you're working for alistair like like state it like he seems to be like this elite elite soldier spy like how the fuck are you involved in this many different things who informs you could also say the same thing about Shimikado, bro i hope there's some cut content about Shimikado, because that guy genuinely blows my mind too style that an esper known as deep blood has the power to kill vampires supernatural creatures who look identical to humans who of course drink the blood of their victims and are apparently as strong as saints like kanzaki are you serious each vampire is as strong as a saint no fucking way i thought the vampires were just like fodder Luckily, these vampires aren't the ones that sparkle. But even in the magic side, the existence of vampires have always been disputed, with the rumors of deep blood being the only potential factor to prove that they are real. That's right. It's a, Alistair says something like, if deep blood even exists, then we can confirm that we can kill vampires or something. And at the end of the day, what was it? Something about Hime's blood? Like, like... If the vampires approached her because... Was her blood too sweet? 
What was it? It was something about her blood and the vampires try to like nibble on her or simply her presence. They would just die, right? And a member of the magic side has infiltrated Academy City in order to capture Deep Blood for whatever reason. Maybe he's just a huge fan of Twilight. And this magician is now camping in Misawa Cram School and is using the teachers and students who belong to a science worshipping cult as hostages. It just This part made no fucking sense. I'm like, why are we in a cram school? Because in order for his power to work, he needed these espers to be, to be doing the magical Gregorian chant along with, you know, drugging himself up to kind of hype himself up and believe that his imaginations can be true, right? As this predicament could escalate into a war between magic and science, Alistair allows Style to stop the enemy magician. But he's got a partner with Toma as his Imagine Breaker power would be pretty useful for it. Like, is that the best Academy City has to offer? A 14-year-old? Like, there's no way, like, that's crazy to me. It, it truly means that Stata is that legit, that he is that competent. He is, like, such an important person that Alistair, the leader, director general of Academy City, sends a 14-year-old to kind of, like, settle this potential war that could happen between the magic and the science side. This. And because he's level zero, Term is not that important anyway, right? Nah, because he's level zero, he's so important. There's no way Alistair doesn't recognize Thomas' strength, right? Right. Back to Not McDonald's, as some shady men in suits arrive to take Isa away, who she claims. Yeah, that's another thing, actually. It's the fact that, like, magic is a hidden thing, right? In Academy City, motherfuckers don't even know magic exists, and when they are confronted with magic, they say, that's impossible, what are you talking about? As these fucking beings basically have magical powers themselves in Esper form. Claims are her cram school teachers. I don't know, Chief. That looks pretty sus to me. Terma and Index then say goodbye to DJ and Blau as they then stumble across a cat in a box. Sphinx. Which definitely isn't a Schrodinger's reference. Yeah, Schrodinger's reference that gets mentioned later on through Sensei, right? Sensei talks about like... Look, it's his gum. Does it exist or not? It was something about, like, the logic to build up the, uh, the personal reality. Reference. Index then decides to adopt the stray, adding to Terma's misfortune as he now has two mouths to feed other than himself. As True. Index names the calico cat Sphinx. Ironically, male calico cats are apparently rare as f which now makes Toma lucky, I guess. Okay. Then Index notices an enemy magician is approaching as she okay. ditches Toma to look for clues. As none other than this stylish style Magnus appears in front of Toma. While Toma has no memory... I'm glad you're enjoying the title reactions. ...of him from the previous arc. Ew, British. You want a bottle of water? Arc. He just acts like everything is normal because he'd be trying to win that Academy Award in this arc. Just you wait. After style fr It is kind of interesting how Toma just goes on with everything because of the memory loss and he's trying to act cool and make it look like, though I didn't lose my memory, so like all, all these behaviors does make sense. Throws some flames at Toma for stealing his girl. He then explains the current quest concerning Deep Blood, who is being imprisoned in a cram school of science worship cultists due to being overrun by an alchemist. Not that one. And yes, if it wasn't obvious enough already, Kimigami Aisa is Deep Blood. Turner mm -hmm. agrees to team up with Style after he threatens that he would take Index back to church. <laughs> Your lolly needs Jesus. Amen. If sure. you refused. Because why bother going to church Algami needs when Jesus. you already have Jesus at home? Toma returns Index to his dorm and finds an excuse to leave her there. This cover art is fucking crazy. What the hell? Why is Index wrapped up like a bondage chain? What, what the hell is this rope work? As he joins Style outside Misawa Cram School. As they enter, the duo discover the body of a dying knight belonging to the Roman Catholic Church. Like this made no fucking sense to me. Right, just like watching this for the first time, we go into a cram school, but the cram school is apparently a cult, and then it's just like a knight exists. And like, what the fuck? Why is a knight bleeding out? And it's like, is he bad? No, he's good. He's good. No, he's bad. I don't know. And then there was the other thing of like light and dark mode, right? W wasn't there something like that? The reason why everyone like acted casually is because like this knight existed in like dark side. I forget the exact terminology, but like people are either heads or tails. Yeah, it was heads or tails coin. Yeah, like what the, where the fuck is that coming from? Heads or tails? What, 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 okay. Church, 
and yet everyone else in the school's lobby were paying zero attention to the bloody corpse in plain sight. Fuck? This is due to the magic barrier or seal covering the school, separating the space along with the people and objects belonging to the school from any intruders who enter. <laughs> okay. Unable to interact with each other like two sides of the same coin. The two then head to the school cafeteria, where suddenly 80 students are swapped to Terma and Styles' side of the coin, meaning they have been detected. None and these brainwashed students can use magic despite being espers? But they bleed out. There's a consequence. But that shit is forbidden. They summon over 100 magic Hadouken oh, balls, man. which get flinged at our duo, causing them to retreat. Turns out Izard is using the students for a spell, known as the Gregorian Chant yep. Replica, 3333, three, three, three. to increase his own power, and it also allows the Misawa Cram School students to use magic themselves. After Style shoves Terma down some stairs and dips because he's a dick, Terma runs into a stray student who begins suffering the consequences of an Esper using magic as her blood vessels explode from within. And yeah, I had no clue of like why she was bleeding out until I realized that yes, Espers cannot use they can use magic, but it's going to be really, really costly. Wait, 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 wait. Espers can use magic. Yes. Magic users cannot use Esper power. Yes. And Chimikado used to be a magic user who went to Academy City as a hidden agent and created his own personal reality, which basically heals him, which is like the perfect fucking power to balance his consequence of using magic as an esper as terma tried to help the poor girl he was surrounded by a vortex of the magic balls believing this was the end but out of nowhere they disappear and isa herself shows <gasps> up while style runs into what appears to be aureolus izard himself aureolus izard you tall as fuck for a 14 year old true <laughs> Very true. I don't know what the fuck he's been eating, but I don't. I don't get the Oreolus part. What, what does that mean? I don't get it. Oreolus. While Style runs into what appears to be Oreolus, is art him. Is Oreolus a wordplay to say aura less? Like you have no aura. I don't get this meme. Self wielding a strange gold. That's his name. Oh, Oreolus. Oreo. Oreolus. Oreolus is it? Got it and chain as part of a spell called Lemon Magna, causing anything that touches the chain to be transmuted into liquid gold. And this Izard isn't even the real one, despite him believing he is. This Izard is an artificial clone. Of the fuck? I don't remember that happening in the anime. Of course, made of gold, whose style refers to as the Oriolus dummy. If you don't remember this dude from the anime, that's because he was cut out completely. Style manages I see, that's the cut content. to slice up the dummy with his flame sword. But the fake is a State has a flame sword? All I've done is I'll, all I've seen him is, you know, summon that flame spirit guardian thing. I wanted to see him with the flame sword. Odd still manages to live despite losing two of its limbs. With the dummy then transmuting the floor into molten gold to make a hasty escape. We cut back to Toma as Isa's knowledge of blood comes in clutch as she treats the wounds of the injured students. As they are about to arrange an ambulance, the dummy shows up who has replaced his limbs with solid gold. The dummy then transmutes six students into oh, gold, fuck. which really pisses off Toma with the injured student saving Isa's life. And she rushed in in front of the chain to take the hit, Hi. which again really pisses off Toma. That's nice, you know, that they actually sacrifice himself for he made their effort. Toma has a great sense of justice. Like, him getting triggered like this... I mean, I guess it makes sense as a main character if you're trying to be like a hero of justice and you see all this bullshit happening in front of you. As he actually considers taking the dummy's life. But despite the... And I think this is a separate video itself, right? There's like another cut content video. It's literally called Why Toma Nearly Killed an Enemy Magician, cut from the anime. But he made a separate video just about that section as well, even though he already mentioned it here. Fake Izard not being a real human being, Toma couldn't take the dummy's life, which acts as foreshadowing as to why Toma values the sisters' lives. Hmm. Toma did not take the dummy's life. Go back again. 
he pisses off Toma as he actually considers taking the dummy's life. But, he but can't. despite the fake Izard not being a real human being, Toma couldn't take the dummy's life. Why? Which acts as foreshadowing as to why. And this, maybe more of it will be explained in the Toma backstory. I'm not sure. Maybe he views all life equal. There's like this hint that he couldn't save a single girl in the past, right? It's like a reoccurring theme that we hear in the intro prologue arc too. Of like, he keeps blaming himself like, oh, I couldn't save a single girl. You know, I'm such a fucking loser. Toma values the sisters' lives in the next arc. As artificially manufactured lives are still considered as actual people by... <laughs> Come on, the clones are way better in Misaka, bro. 10,032 or 31, bro. She's so cute. I Toma. But no, this scene was cut. It doesn't matter that the dummy was spared, though, since Style is a big enough edgelord to finish the job by incinerating the dummy from the inside. How Pikachu. kind. Meanwhile, Index has had enough staying at home doing absolutely nothing. And it's time for her to get kidnapped. As she uses her magic radar to head towards Style's location. You dummy. Then Style encounters the real Izzard and gets wrecked. Index also arrives at the school in front of the real Izzard, who is happy that the girl he loves has come back to him. That's the saddest thing too. The realization that Izzard is also the previous like quote unquote partner for Index and his entire thing, right? What was it? It was about the problem we have with index like memory erasure and something about a vampire vessel that could like transcend this limitation. So in a way, he was trying to save index through his own research. As yes, Izzard used to be Index's partner three years before the start of the story. While he technically belonged to the Roman Catholic Church, he wasn't happy that the church preferred power over saving others. So Betrayal. he betrayed the Catholics by working- uh, He sounds like a really good person, man. ...with the Anglicans by creating magical books known as grimoires and smuggling- Wait, he created the grimoires? Church preferred power over saving others. So Betrayal. he betrayed the Catholics by working with the Anglicans by creating magical books known as grimoires. Isn't that insane that a character like this was behind the creation of these grimoires? The 100,000 whatever that is in Index? He himself is directly in involvement with the Anglican church to create these grimoires that now resides in Index? And smuggling them to England, where the he fuck? met Index and the two developed a friendship. But as Index's memory was forced to be wiped yearly due to lies from the Anglicans that her brain would overload due to her perfect memory, Izzard became desperate and went into exile, forming an ingenious plan that if he vampire. turned Index into an immortal vampire, then she would be able to have an infinite amount of memories, no problem. <laughs> so troll, bro. The church is lying. And Izzard like wasted his entire fuck, not his entire life, but like he wasted so many years, man. He wasted so many years and then he just gets cucked. Like, it's so sad. Izzard isn't even a bad person, but he just got put into this shitty position. I feel bad for him, to be honest. So that's why Izzard's elaborate plan is to use Isa to attract a vampire to mm -hmm. him so he can turn Index into one. Just how many simps does Index have in his story? I feel like we're going to keep meeting more people. More previous partners, more part of the harm that Index has. Maybe Izzard just has a vampire girl fetish. Just saying. Anyway, Isa explains to Toma that she no longer wishes to cause harm to vampires mm. since they are just regular people, not monsters. With Izzard saying to her that he wishes to use her power to help someone dear to him. While Isa would be given Index's walking church, the protective habit which would prevent her from being harmed and also deter vampires from approaching her. Yeah, about that, huh? About that. The walking church... That shit got nullified in episode 1, does not even matter. There's no point for Index to be even wearing it other than just fucking cosplaying or role-playing as the nun or some kind of church member she is. Well, too bad the walking church was destroyed by Toma. Yeah. Also, you better have brought Index another pair of clothes, you greenhead perv. Izzard shows up to take Isa and simply tells Toma to forget everything. Fast forward, as Toma finds himself on a random bus outside the school, what? but he touches his head with Imagine Breaker to cancel out Izzard's reality warping spell, making okay. him remember what just happened. Toma discovers the other useless Roman Catholic Church. 
Yeah, this part was also just like a mindfuck. What's happening? The building was like being reconstructed and knights are outside. Are they doing their own Gregorian chant? Knights outside the school as they launch a real Gregorian chant attack upon the school to kill Izzard. Basically, a magic side tactical nuke. But in this building with his cult member Gregorian chant battery and his power, None of that shit matters. Bro's imaginations are his powers. Which does jack shit as Misawa Cram School repairs itself like nothing had happened. This is thanks to Izzard's replica of the Gregorian chant. He managed to speed run to the ultimate magic of alchemy, Ars Magna, allowing his thoughts to be turned into reality. Ars Magna was actually so strong, so deadly, until we realized that there's a trick, right? And what is the trick? to break that illusion right thomas says like the most iconic lines that he does something along the lines of well let me then break that or shatter that illusion for you imagine breaker also is like the perfect name of a skill that is used to break this illusion this imagination and the more like izzard is less confident about it like, he has to literally like pump himself full of drugs to make him feel hyped up that like what he's imagining is real and he believes in it truly this is the, the ultimate like Bay spirit, how much do you believe in yourself? But before you ask, he can't just turn Index into a vampire with this, since Izzard doesn't have the knowledge of what a vampire truly is, so he can't create one himself. Okay, there are some limitations with this imagination. It's limited by your knowledge of what things are. Terma reunites with Style at the school, as Izzard is confronted and told that Index was already saved by Terma in the previous arc. So there's no need to turn... Then what did I do? What, what, what did I spend the last three years for? What have I done with my life? Turn her into a vampire, meaning everything Izzard has done so far yep. has been absolutely pointless. Wah, wah. Obviously, he doesn't take this news well, as style explodes from the inside. That was creepy as fuck when he got skinned alive. And Isa is ordered to die. die. But I guess Izzard can just bring her back to life whenever he wants. So it's no biggie. He then focuses his attention on Toma and thinks he has a galaxy brain moment, thinking the best thing he can do is the sever guns. Toma's Imagine Breaker from his body. Le I mean, it's not a bad idea, right? How did that wait, 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 wait. But like, Imagine Breaker is bound to Toma's right hand. If you cut that limb off, then like you should be able to just win. How did Toma overcome it? He was such a giga chad. He just like believed in himself so hard where the severed arm then got undone. Or did he also have a severed arm? And then there was like this dragon imagery that showed up that just like shocked Izzard to the core where he couldn't use his skills anymore. Leaving the boy powerless. Izzard sure likes his foolproof plants, huh? While Toma loses his fap arm, yep. this brings his trap card as Toma laughs like a maniac and goes berserk. Like, where did this come from? Like, this Toma just came out of fucking nowhere. I guess it's all the circumstances right now of every everyone else being in danger. An arm cuts off, he goes crazy. This is probably one of Toma's best moments. Putting on an entire act to scare Izzard shitless. Yeah. Making the alchemist lose his cool and his control over Ars Magna. Like straight up just intimidating. He just walks forward with an amount of pressure. Toma's aura. That, it's that simple. Aura diff and Izzard just shit his pants. Or maybe it wasn't an act, but another force influencing Toma's behavior. Hmm, you tell me that Alistair is behind this? Hmm. As is on. <laughs> How would Alistair be able to influence Toma at this moment? Through Stata, maybe? He's not even in the room. Maybe he doesn't need to be in the room. Proximity has nothing to do with it. But rather, maybe Alistair, like, I don't know, programmed Toma to act this way in, in case a lethal damage happens? I don't know. That's interesting. Tries his best to kill Toma. None of his magic works as he freaks out, thinking about the worst possible ending for him as Style and Isa are revived and Toma's arm turns into dragon. a goddamn dragon that vores the alchemist. Yummy. But why a dragon? It can't be random imagery. There has to be a reason why a dragon was shown. Hey. But whether the dragon was real or was created by Ars Magna remains huh. a mystery. Mm -hmm.
I, I want to believe that it's real. I want to believe that this is like the dragon residing within Toma. Just kidding, it's real. Toma wakes up in the okay. hospital. And surprise, after his arm was stitched back on by the yeah. heaven canceller frog. This guy is so fucking cool, bro. Frog doctor. Then again, isn't his lore literally like, I became a doctor to grope nurses? Was that not that? Like, like he, he literally was like touching girls' booties. And he's like, yo, I became the best doctor here so I could sexually harass my employees. Didn't he confirm that? Frogface Doctor, it started working again, just as normal. Weird. And Style says that Izard is technically alive, just that he's lost all his memory. Yeah, and he got turned into a lizard, didn't he? And is essentially now a brand new person. Maybe he's actually dead, and Style was lying. Who knows? Oh. Anyway, Tom. You tell me he didn't lose his memories and get transformed into a lizard? That was that could have been a lie? I don't know. That is harassed by Index and tells him that Isa is recovering in the hospital as well and that the Anglicans will temporarily look after her. Too okay. bad she'll never be relevant again after this, apart from somehow surviving being blown up from the inside uh, during okay. a dire Cesar arc. Okay, oh well. sure. Thank you to my patrons for suggesting... And that's it. I think that spoils like this, honestly, I don't care about. These are very, like, minor subtle spoilers and stuff like that. I'm going to probably forget by the end. But basically, this video did summarize the, the quote-unquote, like, vampire arc in a really concise, nice way. I'd love to be able to farm this guy's channel more. This content is great. Just gives you more background information. And I feel like it's kind of like, um, because the anime is so poor at providing the fundamentals that's required to actually understand a story like it's expecting that you have already read the light novels right it's, it's a bit unfair for me so i think that i'm gonna go in more raw and try to uh farm more of this guy's content of course like we shouldn't be spoiling heavy spoilers but subtle minor spoilers after we've gotten through some kind of arc i, I think that's totally fine please go check out mr aeon of horses channel give him a like there's a link and i'll see you next time